welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and today I'm talking with Kevin Moyer, Product Manager at Times Microwave Systems. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks a lot, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. So uh, we often discuss RF cables in military airborne applications, but they're very important in ground vehicles, too, for military. You know, what applications in the military ground vehicles are RF cables used in? Oh, I see there's a, just a tremendous number of applications in, uh, in military vehicles, uh, radio communication, SATCOM, uh, GPS, uh, data networking, EW systems like jamming, other electronic countermeasures, identification for under foe. And we also see, you know, a new application for uh, a vehicle stopping, you know, high power RF energy to stop a vehicle. So there's, you know, yeah, a tremendous number of uh, applications for coaxial cable assemblies. And so what are some of the challenges for using RF cables in these military ground vehicles and applications? Well, I'd have to say it's uh, ruggedization, ruggedization, and ruggedization. You know, just uh, like that old real estate uh, saying. It's, it's uh, in, in, in there's, there's lots of things to ruggedize for. I mean, concerns are for things like uh, crushing of the cable, kinking of the cable, Extreme cold, extreme heat, UV resistance, abrasion resistance, uh, moisture ingress, survivability for like caustic, hot caustic washdowns. In the case of these vehicles that they had to go through, say a, a biological event or something, they have to be washed down with some you know pretty harsh chemicals, so they have to survive that. Uh, corrosion resistance is a concern. Uh, exceeding the minimum bend radius of the cable is always a concern. Performance reflector is, is a big one. You know, most in most cases, RF cables, you know, they're installed and they're static in place for the for the life of their application. You know, but in ground-based uh, military vehicles, that's just not the case. Sometimes, you know, things are being set up very quickly or ripped down very quickly. Uh, cables sometimes are being coiled, uncoiled. You know, a lot of things are, are, are moving around. Uh, so. Uh, that's that's a really important, and I, and I don't know if I mentioned, but connector retention that's a big one. You know, a cable assembly RF interconnect is only as good as its weakest link, and uh, yeah, that's a lot of times you know where that connector is attached to the cable is, is is really really important. So you know, lots of different things to ruggedize. In some some applications, you're looking to you know prioritize you know some of those characteristics above others, but uh, ruggedization is is by far the, the uh, the challenge in this in this market. And so uh, given this harsh environment, you know, what materials and construction techniques are used to make the RF cables that are suitable for this type of military ground vehicles? Yeah, yeah, lots of different things that we do. You know, probably first thing comes to mind is uh, hybrid outer conductor constructions. You know, with, with static applications, you know, you can use uh, a conductive tape or a copper sheath type of thing. But, uh, you know, we have to get a lot more um, imaginative with, you know, the outer conductor. Uh, some of the things that come to mind is flat braids covered by a helical wrap and a round wire braid. So, you know, kind of a hybrid construction, but a construction that's meant to flex, wants to flex, will perform over time with flexure and maintain loss performance, uh, return loss performance. Yeah, I think that's, 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 a, that's a big one there. Another one is jackets. Two that come to mind in this application are polyurethane. You know, we, we have a polyurethane. It's a very rugged, abrasion-resistant polyurethane. Uh, also, also happens to be fire retardant. Happens to be low smoke. It's very uh, got a very good uh, uh, bend bend moment. So it's you know it creates a very flexible cable. And uh, neoprene. And I mentioned earlier about the biological events. Uh, neoprene is something that will hold up to some of these hot, caustic uh, cleaning agents. Uh, flooding agents never, you know, never hurts. Uh, if if there is a breach in the cable, you know, moisture to RF is 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 a, is a real problem. So, you know, flooding agents like almost like a silicone like material under the jacket that, you know, if there is a breach, the water cannot migrate through that cable. Stainless steel connectors, uh, corrosion resistant platings are, uh, are are also you know you know very important in armor armor. Um, could be in the, in the form of uh, extra braids, extra extra jackets, interlocking armor. Uh, we, we even do a thing where we take a spring steel 
and we wrap it around the cable, as you can imagine, that, that creates a lot of crush resistance, but also it helps um, so that the cable cannot be exceeded, you know, bent beyond its minimum bend radius. It helps quite a bit there. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, connector retention, sometimes what we do is instead of just using a, a tinned copper or silver plated copper outer conductor, we use a, like a tin or silver plated copper clad steel, which, you know, just adds tremendous uh, pull strength to that, uh, that connector. Yeah, you, you know, picking the right outer conductor construction, the right jacket, you know, using, you know, steel braid wires, possibly putting it through an armor, you know, just, you just keep on, you know, adding these layers of protection and ruggedization to, to these uh, cables that, that really, you know, that that's the type of application. They just need it. That's, that's ruggedization, ruggedization, <laughs> ruggedization. And so given all these physical requirements, you know, what are the performance requirements for the RF cables and military ground vehicles? You know, are there any special requirements? Well, you know, the things that, that pop up most often is, you know, IP67, which is, you know, a moisture sealing requirement. IP67 is, you know, one meter underwater for 30 minutes. So that's, that's, that's a very, very common requirement. And as I mentioned, connector retention, the, probably the things that are, first pop up with these type of applications. But in terms of like an additional requirements, we see these 14 requirements where basically you're looking for even a greater level of protection against moisture ingress, maybe two meters, three meters submersion for longer lengths of time. So these vehicles can ford streams, rivers, ponds, that type of thing with a, you know, a level of confidence that the RFS cable assemblies are gonna be sealed to that level. And you know, since this is not a, typically not a static application, these, these cable assemblies over their lifetime, maybe being mated, unmated, coiled, uncoiled, moved, you know, replaced, that type of thing, you know, markers become very important in this application. You know, forward markers, aft markers, and the cable assemblies. And because they're being constantly handled and being in, you know, tough environments, maybe chemical washdowns, you know, protecting these markers with, you know, clear tubing that, you know, that print is going to stand up over time is... Uh, is very, very important. Um, something that we're seeing more often now is, is requirements for um, moisture ingress with unmated assemblies. So, you know, in the past, you know, we do things with, the, you know, between the cable connector interface and the cable itself to protect against moisture in, uh, ingress. But if you happen to have to break down a system and it's raining or it's very humid, you know, there's potential to take in moisture through the unmated connector. So we use special dielectrics that have good RF properties but moisture cannot penetrate through that exposed interface into the cable. We're starting to see requirements for uh, connectors that don't reflect. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to do all that work and camouflage your vehicle and then be given away by a stainless steel connector or nickel plated connector, that type of thing. So we're doing things like flat black platings to, uh, you know, combined with black boots and black over boots and that type of thing, so that uh, you know, you, you know, we're not, you know, we're not being, you know, not, there's, you're not seeing a reflection in the sunlight, that type of thing. And so, what are some of the different types of RF cables that are available for military ground vehicles? Yeah, you know, we have this extensive uh, line of cables, but you know, one that really comes to mind is, you know, we call it a, a TCOM cable, but it's it's a it's a foamed. Uh, cable foam polyethylene cable, but as I mentioned earlier about this hybrid type of outer conductor construction, it has a hybrid outer conductor construction, so it can flex and continue to flex and perform well. You know, a real thin, rugged polyurethane jacket, fire retardant, flexible abrasion, chemical resistant, and that flooding agent underneath the jacket. So it checks off a lot of boxes. Um, but then we have you know some constructions that are designed to like you know extreme flexing. You know, in terms of composite uh, center conductors that aren't going to work hard and over time, um, high temperature requirements. You know, I think a little while back during the Afghan war and the war in Iraq, you know, jammers on, on military vehicles was, was a big requirement. And I think, you know, we worked with three different companies. I think we, we supplied the bulk of those assemblies, or if not all those assemblies, to that requirement. And each one of those companies had a little different requirements. You know, one, one was armor, you know, they stressed armor. One of them stressed, you know, abrasion resistance and flexibility and performance with flexure. And the, the third one stressed uh, high temperature. 
you know, they're routing these, part of these assemblies are routing through engine compartments. And you think engine compartment of a vehicle out in the desert, you know, just, you know, some pretty, pretty high temperatures. So we went to floor polymers for the high temperature requirement. So, you know, floor polymer cables you know, can come into play as well. And sometimes too, some of these uh, applications are higher frequency and we have, uh, you know, special constructions. You know, they um, embrace some of the other characteristics in terms of, you know, ability to perform with flexure over time and uh, UV resistance and you know, temperatures and, and those type of things, but also have a high, temp high frequency performance up around, you know, 26 gigahertz and that type of thing. Well, thank you very much, Kevin, for talking with me today about RF cables used in uh, military ground vehicles. I can uh, see they have to be uh, able to withstand very harsh environments. So that's a good thing. Uh, to our audience, you can find more videos at videos.microwavejournal.com. Thanks for watching.